If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump, so I'm one of the hosts of the show, and I've self-quarantined because I've gotten sick. So you'll hear me from a distance talking to my hosts, my co-hosts, uh, Adam and Justin, throughout this entire episode and probably the next few episodes. Now, uh, in this episode, we answer fitness questions asked by listeners like you. A lot of these questions have to do with what to do at home. Uh, and we totally understand you're probably not allowed to go to your gym right now. So in this mm. episode, we answer a lot of questions in regards to at home fitness, but we open the episode with introductory conversation. We basically catch up. We talk to each other, talk about how we're feeling about uh, what's going on right now. I start out by talking about Italy and uh, the circumstances over there. I have family in Italy, so I have a little bit of a, a personal connection to what's going on over there. If you're listening from Italy, uh, we love you. and We stand with you. Um, I talked about how high households should isolate themselves. Um, that's probably the smartest thing to do right now. Um, I also talked about how I did the dumbest thing ever yesterday. Uh, I thought it would be wise to uh, use a little bit of cannabis and uh, give myself more paranoia. What yeah. a terrible time. Add on the paranoia that. and fear. Woohoo! Super stupid. Uh, then I talked about all day workouts. Um, all day workouts have their own value. I've experimented with these in the past. I've gotten great gains with them, but under normal circumstances, all day workouts are super inconvenient. Uh, but not right now. We're all stuck at home. Guess what? So, you have time. So you got time to test this out, basically. Um, then I talked about a trend that I'm seeing in my neighborhood and on social media. I hope this becomes a nationwide phenomenon. Kids are writing positive messages on sidewalks and driveways. I saw quite a few of them on my walks yesterday. Um, I love it. Um, let's do that. Let's let's uplift each other. Power of positivity. Um, that's right. Adam talked about how there was a, a, a popular DJ who do a, who did a nine hour virtual dance party. Thank goodness for him. I talked about the illusion of control. I think we're all being reminded right now that we're not in control mm -hmm. of as many things as we thought. And it's really no different than it was before. Um, Adam brought up uh, Rita Wilson. This is Tom Hanks's wife and uh, how she was uh, she did some fun stuff on social media. Good for her. Um, I talked about strategies to bring down stress and anxiety, things like using chamomile tea, passion flower, both of them uh, why, have been known for a long time to help the body feel more calm. And then we talked about the use of uh, full spectrum hemp oil, which contains CBD. Now, our partner, Ned, makes some of the best full spectrum hemp oil extract that you'll find anywhere. Um, and the most, uh, the biggest uh, amount of uh, responses that we've get, got from our listeners is that full spectrum hemp oil really does help a lot with anxiety. That's like the number one thing people are telling us that it helps them relax. And I think we could all use a little bit of help right now relaxing. Um, and of course, we have a discount for you because you are a mind pump listener that makes you, you know, awesome. Um, so here's what you do. Go to helloned.com. That's H E L L O N E D.com forward slash mind pump. You'll get 15% off your first purchase. Then I talked about an article written by Arthur Brooks and how he talked about how FaceTiming people is probably a lot better for your psyche than just getting on the phone. Uh, Adam brought up a house party app and Telegram app. These sound like uh, awesome things to be using right now to kind of connect with people around you. I talked about some big news. Justin gave away some cool, fun facts in regards to perfume. You won't believe what makes your yeah. perfume smell so nice. Spray that on your face. And then he talked about giant white mushrooms. Yeah, it's uh, more interesting stuff. Sounds uh, like I was high got, when I came up with those. Yeah. Then we got into the fitness questions. So here's the first one. This person's finding themselves less motivated to do at-home workouts versus when they used to be able to go to the gym. So they wanted some advice. You know, how do I get myself to stay consistent at home uh, because I'm finding it to be difficult right now? So we give some strategies on how you can help yourself stay consistent while you're stuck at home. The next question, this person says, hey, what is the best way to implement your at-home exercise program? Should you do an hour a day 
or should you split it up into two or three 20 minute workouts and how can this affect our mental health so we actually all agree that there's a better way to do this uh so we talk we give you guys advice in that part of the episode um the next question this person's noticing that since they're being confined to the house their appetite has gone up quite a bit totally normal you're all probably experiencing this it's stress eating uh we all do it but now we're stuck at home the refrigerator is literally right across the room. So we talk about strategies on how you can prevent yourself from gaining uh, the COVID-15 uh, that we're finding right now that people are gaining. And the, fall, the, the final question, this person wants us to define what it means to take a workout to fatigue. So you may have heard us say, you know, uh, the way you should work out at home right now is you should do your sets to fatigue. Well, what does that mean? Is that the same as failure? What are the benefits? Why should I train this way? So we explain why you should train this way and why you should not go beyond that level of intensity. Also, all month long, because of what's going on right now, because people aren't able to go to their gyms, we have a very effective at-home workout program called MAPS Anywhere. Now, MAPS Anywhere utilizes body weight. It utilizes resistance bands. It utilizes a broomstick for tension movements. This is totally unique to our program. Uh, I don't know of any other program that incorporates all three of these methods and modalities in a, in a well-programmed workout. And there's also a TRX or suspension mod. So if you have a suspension trainer uh, at home or the brand name TRX, these are the handles that hang from a bar or whatever. We have a mod in this program that takes you through a whole workout utilizing those as well so this entire program super effective minimal equipment it's the it's the best at home workout program that you'll find anywhere we put this program 50 percent off okay we weren't planning on doing this but uh you know given the current circumstances we thought we might as well put this on 50 percent off to give people more access to this amazing workout program again it's 50 percent off here's how you get that discount just go to mapswhite.com, that's M-A-P-S-W-H-I-T-E.com, and use the code WHITE50, that's W-H-I-T-E-5-0, no space, for the discount. T-shirt time! And it's T-shirt time. Ah, shit, Doug, you know it's my favorite time of the week. We have very light reviews this week. We have one winner for iTunes and one winner for Facebook. Wow. The iTunes winner is Leanne Trong. And for Facebook, we have Ricky Sire. Both of you are winners. Send the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Include your shirt size, your shipping address, and we'll get that right out to you. Get those reviews in. Easy chance to win right now. I have a direct connection to Italy, so I know what's going on over there, okay? And uh, this is, you, you need to designate one person by themselves to go. If you have a mask, wear it, and you wear gloves when you come back. You got to clean all the fucking groceries with either soap and water or Lysol. Oh my god! You, you got Yeah, you guys got to start start taking it seriously and not uh, go out there because what's what's happening in Italy? People aren't listening, and you're getting pockets of people infected, and then it just spreads. Well, what's because uh, they're not? What's happening over here though? What are we? Uh, it seems that we're we're dampening the curve pretty pretty big right now no or not well we, we it's hard to tell because the they're they're doing a bunch of tests now so as of right now what we see is uh i think forty one thousand confirmed cases now in the u.s yeah. so last week it was uh you know four thousand mm -hmm. something like that three thousand Thir thirteen thousand thirteen so it's yeah. just uh because there's a lot more testing but um you know, this this is how it ramped up in Italy and in Spain. Is it? It just went. It was because people weren't listening. They weren't listening to the. They're you know visiting you know family members. You know, oh, I'm okay. I don't feel anything. And they go visit a family member, and then enough of that happened to where they now are in the situation they're in now. So, uh, you don't want to, um, you want to isolate into your in your household because the the way that it's spreading is mostly through person to person. So, you know, you don't want to visit anybody, not your parents, not your siblings, just isolate yourself in your house and, um, and then take all the, 
you know, and everybody has to do that. If everybody does that, then we'll, we, we, we got a, a chance, but we're still going to see uh, a, a spike. We're probably still going to see a big spike. We're supposed you to know. see it right now, right? I mean, this is supposed to be the last week. They were saying the 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 next six to twelve days. I think is what I saw. We because we're we're only supposed to be one week behind Italy, right? It's hard to say, dude. Um, it's it's really hard to say if we go the way of uh, South Korea and uh, in Taiwan, or if we go the route of Italy. Spain is seeing an explosion of cases now. We're, we're it, the we're two days now where Italy has seen lower, uh, slightly lower death rate in cases. Um, so hopefully that's the, looks like hopefully they hit the peak yeah. and they're starting to drop. But you know, my family in Sicily, and I haven't seen this anywhere in the news. This is just for my family in Sicily, but they apparently, uh, someone from the North visited their parent in one of those, uh, like care homes or whatever, one of those nursing homes. Yeah. And didn't have any symptoms, but apparently had the virus, and it just exploded now in this uh, nursing home. I know that's I know that's what happened over in uh, in Seattle too, right? That's what what spikes some of these death numbers is when you get a somebody who infects a community like that. And did you know that Italy is the the second oldest uh, uh, country in the world? Yeah, they have a very uh, you know they have a, a very aging population yeah they, they, um, they the, live on top of each other yeah. you know like the way the houses are over there a lot of the t- cities is that it's like san francisco you, yeah. you have a building and then you have floors and then typically in those floors are uh, connected families so like the top floor is grandma and grandpa the second floor is you know uh you know one of their kids and their families the next floor is their other cousins so you've got like five families living in the same building and what they're they're not isolating themselves to the floors so they're like well what's the big deal you know wrong so now instead of a group of you know six people you have you know 40 people who are you know visiting each other in the same building and um and that's you know that's that's why italy's having such a such a rough time and yeah. if it gets you know if it starts to get out of hand then it just starts to compound mm-hmm. well r- rumor r- rumor has it we got uh national guard and everybody's coming out right now right so it's supposed to hit uh i know uh, Trump said something about San Francisco or Bay Area is getting it now, where they're they're they've already deployed a bunch. Uh, so. Yeah, well, I, and I I think what they're do, what they're I'm not quite sure what the the guard is going to do. I think they're just there to help. Hmm. So if like hospitals need help, if they need to build, um, you know, makeshift uh, testing facilities and stuff like that. Um, but we don't want to be in a. In a yeah. It's so funny. I was somebody tagged me on uh, shared a Twitter link with me of the, the messages that uh, Italian mayors are telling their cities, I almost fell out of my chair. Why? What are they saying? Oh, they're they're like, what the fuck are you doing? I'm going to come to your house with a flamethrower if you leave your fucking house. Everybody stay. Like, they're they're <laughs> hammering people in, 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 in Italian style, which is just, it's comical, but it's also just a sign of how desperate uh, a lot of those towns are getting over there because... Mm-hmm. You know, I think today there the today and yesterday we saw a slight drop in cases and in deaths. So if, if that trajectory maintains, then it, they might have, uh, you know, hit their peak or whatever. But sometimes what happens with these uh, in these pandemics is it'll you'll see like bursts. So it'll spike real high, kind of drop, and then somewhere else in the country will have a, a you know explosion of cases, and then they'll take care of that, and then it goes down. Then you see another one somewhere else. What, so, do you, what are you um, what are you reading right now? With I've seen quite a few things pop up as far as uh, um, uh, a vaccine, and I've seen some. I saw some pills that were being pushed through right now that supposedly helped a bunch of people. There's all kinds of stuff that I'm seeing surface. I don't know what to believe. I don't know what's true and what uh, what's approved. I, I've seen. I haven't. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I've seen some uh, anti-malaria type of medication they're trying to use right now too so it's interesting to see what's popping up yeah that's what the, that's the one that so far um it, it, that's the one that so far is uh, has the most promise hmm. is uh an, a malaria drug i can't remember the name of it hydra uh it's a uh, chloroquine i think it's called mm-hmm. Hydra. Hy- yeah, yeah. Hydra- yeah. That, i've seen a lot about that yeah now that drug which is kind of cool that's a that's been that was discovered in 1934. It's a a drug that we've used a lot uh, for decades. So 
which is cool because if it actually does uh, help, um, we're working with a drug that we've worked with, you know, for decades. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and we have a lot of it, and it's uh, it's uh, inexpensive. There was a French study that combined the anti-malarial drug with um, azithromycin, which is a, a popular uh, antibiotic. You've probably taken it before. It's like a Z-pack, they call it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that, uh, in the French study, seemed to be, uh, you know, effective. So, was it the malaria uh, medication that would make people have like crazy nightmares? Uh, I remember like reading something about that about getting like these vaccines and things like going to visit countries and, and like some of the malaria medication like made people get like insomnia and crazy like crazy dreams. Oh, I have no idea what the side effects are. Yeah, I have no, yeah, no idea. Did you watch? But, uh, did you watch the conspiracy video that I sent over to you? No. What would it say? <laughs> Damn it! Come on, man. Bro, hey, well, listen. I sent it. I think I sent it to you privately. This so was you, the, the when world I send you CEO something privately. Thing? That means you have to watch it. You yeah. punk. Yeah. Let me tell. Hey, let me tell you about my current state of mind, so you can understand <laughs> what's going on. Okay. So yeah, we gotta I've lighten been, you up, dude. I've been self quarantined here at home. I can't see my kids. And, uh, so last night, right. My, my, I'll tell you what happened last night. You guys are going to crack up. I have no idea why I thought this would be a good idea. It was, it's literally the most bonehead thing I've done in a long time. So I'm, I'm at home and I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm feeling a little lonely, you know, missing me. You know, I've been FaceTiming my kids and everybody, but you know, you know, missing you guys. I haven't been able to fucking see you guys yeah. since, uh, since last week. And, and, uh, so my cough is getting a little better. So I'm coughing here and there. So I'm like, you know, I'm going to chill out a little bit. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, I have a vape pen that uh, I haven't used in a little while. And I thought, you know, this might be a good idea. Just hit the vape pen and, and, uh, you know, chill out for a bit, watch a movie or whatever. Well, first off, because I just, I'm still getting over whatever I'm getting over. Uh, I had a freaking uh, asthma attack and coughing my ass off. Oh, so that was, oh no, <laughs> dude. Yeah, dude. So, and immediately, immediately after I, t- I, I took the hit off the vape pen, and I could feel myself like, oh, man, I'm going to start coughing. I was like, the realization, you know, like, what a fucking idiot. What are you thinking? Of course. This is gonna be- <laughs> yeah, go with edibles, dude. What are you doing? And then because I haven't had anything like that in such a long time, um, one, you know, dose off of it got me super blazed, right? So the next thing you know, you're, you're I'm paranoid as hell. Yes, dude. Oh, no. So- I'm sitting there on the couch and, you know, Jessica's sitting there and she's just, you know, doing something. And then she looks at me and she's like, you're okay right now. And I'm like, I think I'm getting a little paranoid right now. She's like, oh, shit. <laughs> I told Adam, I had a dream. I, like I had a legit nightmare about this whole coronavirus thing. Like, like it was like some kind of mutating genetically like modified, like <laughs> virus thing that everybody all of a sudden started like changing. And I was like, Oh my God, I've been watching too much sci-fi. Yeah. Dude. You know, we watched a lot of Westworld over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh dude. It so freaking me so, out though. Yeah. So, um, and you know, it's, uh, sometimes those bad things can, uh, you know, they can put things into perspective. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, you know, uh, it, it's, it's probably wise to, to, organize my life and this probably i mean this this might be valuable for the audience if they're feeling the stress of uh you know just just unknown and self-isolation is to kind of organize your life around uh you know relaxing around taking your mind off things Mm -hmm. like you know you probably want to stay away from stimulants you you probably want to you know keep yourself healthy break your day up into into segments because that, you know, whenever you read uh, studies on how people handle uh, stressful situations, like really stressful situations like mm-hmm. POWs and stuff like that, uh, one of the, one of the you know, psychologists will talk about a strategy where you, you break up your day mm-hmm. um, and you could break it up with your workouts. So like we talked about doing, you know, three workouts a day. You could do, you could meditate, you could, you could pray, yeah. um, you can, you do know, puzzles. break up your day and yeah, walks, <laughs> puzzles. Yeah. Um, That's what we, then, we've been doing pretty yeah, good. We've been doing a lot of that. I, I think, yeah, just keeping your mind busy doing things is, is really helpful. Like, Ed, I love like projects around the house too. And like, so I've, I've definitely got into this platform thing and it was <laughs> funny today. I, I was going to set Adam up for this because he got me really good this morning because I've been like so obsessed. Yeah, you got to first every tell- little detail of like this logo. So 
uh, we're trying to improve, um, you know, our gym here at the, at the house. And so I, I decided to like take on this do it yourself project of, of, you know, building this platform for deadlifting and powerlifting and whatnot. And so, uh, I'm basically putting it all together and then I get to the part where I'm painting, um, in this logo on there and it's like so detailed that the mad mic and everything has so many details and little intricate things to it. And so I'm like out there with a razor blade every day, like making <laughs> sure like I'm taping just so, and then, you know, I'm adding like four different layers of paint, uh, to different parts of it. And so I'm just like fixated and obsessed with this thing. Oh, he's put in, he's put in at least, uh, 40 hours into this platform, dude. I'm not, he's not, a, he's not, uh, He's underselling it right now. Like yeah. it's been ridiculous. It's been a lot. And the de- it's the de- gonna be the best looking platform. Oh <laughs> well, he's and he he decided instead of like doing like Doug like suggested doing like a decal, like just buying it and sitting on there. And Justin's like, no, it won't look as good. It'll wear out. He's like, I want to paint it on there. So he went and has stenciled the Mad Mike logo, and he did it stenciling with spray paint and tape and razor blade. So you can imagine with all the different colors that are on it, and I mean, he's literally been going uh, just every single night over and over and over and over and it's like he's really close to being done like he's he was about to lacquer it today yeah yeah, yeah. And, wow uh, and i came out in the garage like i mean this guy's been just like pouring over. and you you know just you know how justin gets right when he's like focused on something and he's frustrated about something like he's like to himself and just wants to power through it and get it done he's got my horse it's, blinders on. and i don't say anything right like i don't like i can see it in his face that i'm not going to go over there and like give my suggestion on what he should do or be like that was a really bad idea right like i gotta say <laughs> shit right i'm just gonna fucking let him do his thing well <clears throat> he's almost done right and he was he was finishing up the last touch-ups and, and uh it's gonna get lacquered today when i came out of the garage where it's at and I'm, and he's sitting on the couch this is first thing this morning he's having his cup of coffee and i walk by Courtney and go hey i'm gonna fuck with your husband right here and I come walking. I, I said, Justin, what? Why did the why did the mind pump logo bleed all together from the the lacquer stuff that you poured on it? He's like, what? I'm like, oh, the whole thing, <laughs> the thing, the thing jumped up off the couch. Like, <laughs> he shot like out of the couch, ten feet in the air. The look of his face, bro, he went like pale white. You know? so, <laughs> <laughs> uh, whole, so messed up, dude. Oh, so pissed. Everybody's like in their the kids are over. Everybody's and, laughing. Yeah, the kids are overdoing their their homework, and Bree's here now, and Doug was in the kitchen, and then Katrina was in the in the living room, and and Doug back working on this computer. Everybody just started dying laughing because. They know how much he's been putting on it, and you can see the he's shot up and the look in his face, dude. He's so fucking oh, freaked out. Oh, damn, pretty, pretty fucked up, Adam. Pretty, damn, pretty messed up. You guys. Yeah. Hey, uh, hey, so how are the how are you guys doing the the all day workouts? Are you guys going like like a few times a day going in the garage and like yeah. throwing some squats and some deadlifts and stuff? Ten to twenty minute uh, intervals, like uh, pretty much sporadic all day, man. It's uh, it's been really fun actually. Like I've I felt like energized and, and stronger doing it that way for sure. Oh. I was just going to ask, like, what have you guys, because I'm, I've only done like scheduled all day workouts. Uh, I've only done it twice or three times. And what I noticed was, cause here's the way I organized it, right? I picked three exercises. So, you know, squat, uh, I did squat, bench press and, uh, barbell row. And, uh, what I did was I would do like, you know, three sets of five or six reps and the intensity I'd say was like maybe 80%. So, You know, I I would do six reps with something that normally I would do, you know, 10 reps with or or maybe eight reps or seven or or nine reps with or something like that. Right. And I noticed by the second or third and then I would do it every other hour. So I would start at 9 a.m. Then, you know, I wouldn't do anything at 10 a.m. Then 11 a.m. I'd go outside, do the same thing. Then I wouldn't do anything at noon and then I'd do it again at one or whatever. And I noticed by the second, third and fourth session like the first session, I'd have to warm up. I'd have to get myself ready, whatever. By the second, third, and fourth, I'd get right into it, and I just felt stronger mm-hmm. Like as the, the workouts progress. Are you guys noticing anything like that at all? Well, I'm getting really sore. So I'm doing, my, I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm not quite doing like an all-day thing. What I do is I, just, I, I pick two exercises uh, per workout, and I'm trying to do three workouts in the day. Uh, oh, okay. so I'll just pick, I'll pick two things and it could be as skull crushers and squats. Like it doesn't even matter. Like I just decide I'm gonna hit my triceps and I'm going to squat for the the first two exercises. And then the next one I'll do later on in the day, I was, I was doing like a uh, stiff legged deadlifts and rows. Uh, and so I pick two exercises. I do five sets. Uh, it takes me about 15 to, to 20 minutes, uh, to do the two exercises, five sets. And I do that three times a day. So I'm getting about 30 sets, total working sets for the day. Wow. 
and and because it's broken up, it, it, the workout doesn't feel hard. I'm not breaking a sweat really when I even do them. But, but the next day I'm sore as shit, so I know I know it's more than enough volume. Uh, and then we try. I try to break it up with a. Yesterday was a good day. I, I went for a really good long walk with Katrina and Max, and so it's nice over here. Obviously, there's nobody out, so it's uh, you know we get a nice good long walk throughout all the all the houses and the snow yeah. out here. So. Yeah, if I can do that, that the main thing that I have to worry about right now, even more than I think the the even the lifting, is you know I've had a couple of days where I didn't lift, and boy, I could probably I'm probably getting under a thousand steps. So you got to be really careful uh, to not uh, graze on food all day too. So it's you know if if I'm sitting around all day long in the house. And on top of that, I didn't get my workout in, and then it could get really tempting to be grazing all day. So those are the things. And I think that's the challenges I think a lot of people are having right now. I think a mm-hmm. lot of people are at home, uh, even if they are getting a little bit of a workout in, they're still sedentary for a, a majority of the day, and then they're tempted to be kind of snacking and grazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's I think that's probably the, an area that I think everybody is probably struggling with. I And I, too, know what that feels like because I've had a couple of days like that where it's felt like that. Yeah. So what I, what I, what I started doing yesterday was I'll do, um, three 30 minute walks a day. So I'll do one in the morning, one in the afternoon, um, and then one in the evening just to go outside, move around. And, uh, man, I tell you what though, uh, I've had some of the most amazing experiences going for a walk in my neighborhood. Like I, and I've done this before. I have this, this route that I take, right? So Jessica and I will, take a walk or I'll do one with my, with my kids. And it's the same route it takes about 30, 35 minutes. And typically when you're walking on this route, you know, you walk by people, you see people and nobody says anything, you mm-hmm. know, you just do, you just mind your own business, but it's so different now. Um, I, I, whenever I see somebody and, you know, people are keeping their distance. So if I'm walking on the sidewalk and someone's walking towards me, mm-hmm. one of us will walk over to the street, you know, to, to maintain distance. So everybody seems to be pretty aware but every single person smiles and says hi, yeah. which I've never experienced that in my neighborhood before. I mean, every single person, every person, I don't care how old, young or whatever, mm-hmm. everybody's saying hi, people are, and I feel like I, I can feel how people, um, you, you know, they feel a sense of unity, mm-hmm. a little bit of a sense of unity because we're kind of, and then I noticed something else uh, yesterday um, and I started seeing this kind of sporadically, but now I'm seeing it everywhere. I don't know if you guys have seen this yet, but are sidewalk chalk and they're writing did you guys see my post on Instagram? i did i did i saw kids are starting to draw all over the chalk like hope and and positive thoughts and like all kinds of rainbows and cool stuff on the on the sidewalk hmm. dude everywhere That's it's cool. happening everywhere all, all over my walk i'm seeing it you know like at first i saw it once now I, you know then the other day i saw it four times now i'm seeing it in like uh, just tons of driveways and on the sidewalk mm-hmm. and they're like these hopeful messages from from kids. And, um, I think that's so, I think that's so amazing. It was making me think, you know, like, like last night, you know, after I, I got over my, uh, my self-inflicted paranoia idiot, uh, <laughs> yeah. move or whatever, I was thinking to myself, um, what it's going to be like when everything calms down. Cause at some point it will, you know, at some point it's all going to calm down and we're going to kind of go back to regular life. And I thought how different it's going to be going to like a restaurant, like normally you go to a restaurant with your, your wife and Mm -hmm. whatever. And you might, you know, you eat your dinner and you hang out a little bit, whatever. But I thought, man, the first time I go to a restaurant, when everything calms down, I'm going to feel, I'm going to really want to talk to everybody around me. I'm going to want to, you know what I mean? I feel like we're going to all feel Hmm. like we want to smile at each other and, 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 uh, and talk to each other. So, uh, you know, and I, ho- I, I don't, I don't think I'm the only one that. No, I, there's, 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 there's definitely a, a sense of community and empathy that is kind of bringing all of us together during this time. There's, def- I, I can definitely see the silver lining in what's going on. Uh, I think a lot of people are forced to be at with their thoughts mm-hmm. uh, and ultra present. You know, a lot of us uh, distract ourselves with uh, things outside of your home, and I think that everyone being forced to be home and be with your family or you're having deep conversations and uh, like you, like I said, time with yourself. And there's some really cool things that are happening. I don't know if you yeah. saw, uh, so DJ nice, uh, real the famous DJ, uh, decided to do like a, a tribute to all the, uh, everybody, the men and women that are 
serving and are still going out to work and, and dealing with uh, all these people that are contagious and uh, they're the real heroes right now. And so he did a, a live uh, dance party and streamed it for nine hours. And wow. yeah, it ended up getting so much traction, like Michelle Obama and Bernie Sanders was in there and all kinds of celebrities. And so it turned into this big dance party that hundreds of thousands of people were tuning in live with yesterday yeah. uh, and and hanging out and dancing with them. I thought that was really cool. It's cool. I, I honestly feel like there's going to be a creative explosion uh, after all this, is the, the dust settles. I, I really feel like people have enough time to then, like you said, be present and reflect and think about things and try to, you know, really figure out, uh, like some of their passions and reconnect to their passions and hobbies and things like that. I've seen, uh, some people just willingly giving out free, uh, you know, guitar lessons and things and have been streaming with students and, uh, other teachers that have taken it upon themselves to structure a lesson for like, uh, you know, my seventh grader and like all the rest of the seventh graders because no other teachers are doing it. So somebody just did it and they did this live class together and they're all talking. And it's really cool that, uh, you know, what people are coming up with right now. Yeah. I, I, for me, the, the lessons that I'm starting to take out of this. And I, I think this is important. You know, I, I want to share that w- with the audience. You know, if you're anytime you're going through a difficult, stressful time, uh, one of the, the, in my experience, one of the best things you could do is try to ask yourself, what can I learn from this and how can I grow from this? That way, at least it gives your, that stressful time, a sense of meaning and purpose. You know, it kind of reframes it, you know, here's what I got from that from that, um, you know, stressful situation. And for me, uh, one of the big lessons, it was two of them. One is, you know, the, the, the false sense of control that I think we all, um, that we all had. And the we're all remember right now we're being reminded that we're not as in control of everything, yeah. uh, that, that we think we are. Um, and that's something you need to expect, you know, you need to, uh, accept, um, regardless of what's going on is that there's a, there are certain things you can control, but there's a lot that you can't and uh, just focus on what you can. Mm -hmm. And this is a reminder of that. You know, this is a reminder that you can't, that you're not as in control um, as you think. And then the other thing is just how spoiled uh, and easy it is for all of us to forget the the things that are important um, and how we become so easily attached to, material things, things that aren't important, you know, and, and it's like, this is a huge reminder, you know, it's a big reminder. Like, look, you, you, these, these are not important. Here are the things that are really important. Like I, like, like I said, walking around outside, I never think to myself how happy and grateful I am that there's other people walking around that I can say hi to. I don't give a shit. Normally I walk, I do my walk mm-hmm. and I'm done. And if somebody says hi to me, I'll say, hi, I'm not an asshole, but my attitude now is like, if I see someone, I want to make eye contact. I want to say hi to them. Um, well, yeah. Imagine, imagine, I'm the, imagine the 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 extreme version of that, right? And you're getting a ta- we're all getting a taste of that right now. If you were on an island, stranded by yourself for weeks or months or years at a time, and you walked by a first the first other human being, like how excited would you be to fuck just to see another human being, right? So I think you're oh, get, totally. it, Wilson. You're, you're you're getting a a obviously a a very small uh, version of that because we've only been at like what a week now that we've all been confined to our homes. So I definitely feel the same thing too. I, I mean, there there are. Uh, I I also think there's a lot of. Uh, I, I'm liking the the trend that I'm seeing right now uh, on like social. I feel like more and more people are, are being playful and fun and yeah and, and the the attitudes kind of changing you still have some of your people that are like negative Nancys and and doom and gloom and shit but uh, for the most part I think we're seeing more and more positive fun message and people getting creative did you see uh, uh, Rita Wilson Tom Hanks's wife mm-hmm. did you no, see- what's going on oh dude you have to you have to get on your phone right now and freaking look at her Instagram page. She she posts. I think Barstool Spo, uh, Sports also reposted. I think, um, but she just you know she had uh, uh, COVID nineteen right. Her and Tom. Yeah. So uh, she's she does this video, and she's like reading a book, and then uh, Naughty by Nature uh, comes on. Hip hip hop hooray right comes on. <laughs> yeah. And uh, she, she's like it's it's in the background. She does it verbatim. That's and pretty- then she fucking rips yeah. the whole song verbatim, dude. 
It's so, oh, that's great. Oh, it's so that's good. Really it's so good. That- so, That's great. Yeah. So I, I, you know, I think there's just, and it's so cool to see her do that, uh, considering that, uh, she's, she's gone through it right now, which I think is so, so yeah. important because I think so many people are, are freaked out. I mean, right now the, she's fully recovered, right? Or she's recovering. She's recovered. I don't think, I don't yeah. think they consider them fully recovered until they've actually had a few weeks, yeah. right. Uh, of recovery. But I mean, yeah, I, I think I, it's I, like, well, if anybody knows two weeks without, <clears throat> yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, if anybody knows how to do isolation, it's Tom Hanks uh, from Castaway. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. He's like, yeah here is experience. So. Well, you know, oh, that, dude. It, I think it's important that people know that, I mean, we uh, we are in the, four, we're up to 42 or 47,000, I think is what I've seen total cases. But 97% of those are are mild cases still. Only only 3% are, are considered uh, serious cases. Uh, still, that's 1,000 people. Um, that uh, you know, have have a ser- have a serious case of COVID nineteen, but you know, there's still a majority of even the people that are getting it are are mild symptoms. So I think knowing that or letting people know too that you know it's not it's not that doom and gloom. We're, what we're doing right now is a precaution to not overwhelm our hospitals, and I think it's smart uh, with what we're doing, and everybody should take heed to. The advice of staying home and not gathering with social events or going places. I think uh, it's really, really smart of all of us to band together and do that. Yeah, you need to be uh, you need to be rationally uh, cautious. So do the things that you know uh, that are you know that are smart to do. So you know, uh, isolating yourself, not hanging out with people, not visiting people, talking to people through FaceTime. Um, you know, that's very, very washing your hands. You know, that's very, very smart Um, sitting at home and freaking out over stuff that hasn't happened or watching the news 24 seven like that's uh, it's not helping you. It's not helping you. It's just going to it's just going to make you stay at home and be scared. That's why I was telling I was telling this to my my aunt. I told her, I said, "Okay, look, uh, you want to watch the news? I said, that's fine. Designate one uh, one time during the day that you watch the news, you're going to check in, uh, you know, at whatever time. And then that's it. And then keep yourself away from the news. And, you know, if something big happens or whatever, I'm sure you'll hear about it. Yeah. Uh, but you know, and then, and also the strategies of, you know, keeping yourself kind of feeling good and calm. So like, uh, chamomile, uh, tea is really good for that. That's something you can use on a, uh, on a daily basis. It's a natural, uh, relaxing herb. It's very, very safe. Even children, uh, can take uh, chamomile, uh, passion flower. That's another, uh, herb that you can use. That one's a little stronger. So if you're having a, if you're feeling a little bit more, um, anxious and you need to add something, you know, passion flower, although I don't think you want to take passion flower on a super regular basis. No, I can't um, cam- chamomile and some CBD, bro. That's, I, that's what I was just going to, I was just going to say, uh, uh, Ned, you know, like our sponsor, Ned, their product, our, 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 uh, you know, uh, listeners have been using that for a long time. And, and what's the number one thing they say it helps with, uh, with anxiety. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so d- do those things and be proactive about it. And, uh, you know, I was thinking about, remember when we went to, um, listen to Arthur Brooks talk yeah. and how, pr- how profound that was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. One, one thing that he said that really stuck out to me that, um, is true, um, was that the opposite of love is fear or the opposite of fear is love. Um, you know, you think that the opposite of fear is bravery or the opposite of love is hate or whatever, but it's not, it's, it's fear. So, uh, if you start to feel fearful, um, start thinking of all the, the, the how much you love, uh, the, the people around you, the, the gratitude that you have for, you know, uh, being again, like saying pe- hi to people as you walk by them, talk to people on FaceTime, um, he posted an article about, uh, you know, how our bodies react to human contact and how humans need, you know, human contact. And he says that studies show that FaceTime um, uh, does that a lot better than just a phone call because you can see the person's uh, you can see the person's face. Uh, I got something for so, that. I just uh, I actually I forgot to send it to you. It seems like you weren't responding. I just downloaded the app. OK, good. As I say, I, I just so House Party uh, is made by Epic Games. It's a app you can download for free. Uh, okay. And it, it's up to eight people at one time on your phone. Yeah. So it's, oh, wow. yeah, yeah. It's like a mini Zoom, but then it's nice because then you don't have to have a Zoom account. It just, everybody can get in, get in on it, and you can all be talking. It doesn't matter if you it's have the old school party line. Right? Yeah. It doesn't matter if you have a Droid or you have an iPhone. Everybody can get it. So it's blowing up right now. 
Uh, it's pretty cool. So I, I had everybody on the team uh, download that so we can get on later on as uh, get the staff on and have some fun a little bit. Along those lines, I'm glad you went that direction too because I had some things like that. Uh, I'll try it every, every time we have an episode and bring some cool things that I've read as far as what, what are some people doing. Um, there's a, an app called Telegram app. I guess it's kind of like old school chat rooms. So oh, really? yeah, yeah, it's all encrypted too. So it, it's so it's as far as privacy is concerned and everything like that. Um, it's popular. It's blowing up right now. It's called Telegram app, uh, and just allows you. You can create your own group, private group. You can create a public group where people can come in. You can add, join other groups, have discussions. Like, and it's everything. You can. Uh, it's pretty cool. Hmm. Uh, well, dude, I I tell you what, it's I can't think of a better time for this to be happening. You know, if this was you know 1990, we'd all be. Oh Just right! Call, calling each other on the phone, but now we could like FaceTime and get on group. We calls. had like AOL. Yeah. You know? It'd take like an hour for it to get fired up, but yeah, you know. yeah, exactly. Hey, what are you guys? Uh, what are you guys eating over there? How are your meals going? What's going on? Oh, um, uh, much better now. Yeah, yeah. That. Once we hit the gro- the grocery store, got restocked. So yeah. the, we we actually were able to get some good stuff. Last night was uh, uh, butcher bork butcher bork butcher boxes uh, pulled pork. So Katrina made mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. the girls have been kind of bouncing back and forth uh, between nights. So last night Katrina made uh, pulled pork sandwiches. Um, oh, yeah, we had that with a with a avocado cucumber salad that she makes. And oh, then, that's awesome! And yeah, then the night, really be- good. night before, uh, Courtney made a her like her famous spaghetti. meatball spaghetti. Yeah, her meat, it, meatball sausage yeah. spaghetti. Yeah, it's really it's really like meat spaghetti. It's yeah. not like a, a whole lot of uh, spaghetti in there. But yeah. Uh, yeah, it's really good. And of course, I got my gluten free pasta in there. So yeah, so we oh yeah amazing. so yeah now we're now we're better and we we were able to get some chicken thighs. So we we got I mean the girls brought the crock pot, the Insta pot. The Doug brought a air fryer up here. So. I mean, we're pretty much. Yeah, we're set now. Yeah, we're set. The first, the first couple uh, days that we were here, uh, we were a little limited to um, our options, but now we're lo- we're loaded up with like good choices. Hmm. So it's uh, it's been pretty solid. Yeah. Awesome. So so um, I thought uh, it, right now would be a good time to share some good news that I've been sitting on for uh, the past uh, ten weeks. Um, I think now I got the clearance to from uh, from Jessica to be able to share this, so the audience doesn't know that this but uh but we are expecting so, oh that's yeah. right i forgot you know what i just remembered that we only told that to the live audience huh yeah yeah i never I, yeah this is it i haven't I haven't told anybody we waited you know for obvious reasons or whatever right. but uh yep jessica's pregnant and um we are expecting so you know due date is in oh uh, yeah october wow so super congrats super to you guys yeah for sure uh, super excited about it the kids are super excited my daughter is just beside herself she's like she, uh, you know, when, when we finally told them, she, she's like, take me to this. Is, this was weeks ago. Right. She goes, take me to the store. I need to be able to buy the first present, you know, for the baby. And so she, she bought the baby a, a blanket and, you know, <laughs> she draws pictures for the baby. And yeah. so, yeah, so that's, that's good news. You know, so that's so, exciting. So cute too. Yeah. yeah now I, you guys so, are, you guys are waiting to, to hear the sex, right? You're going to be surprised. We're not going to, we're not going to get, find out the gender until the baby's born. So now, now Old walk school. Well, yeah, walk me through this. So now, do you guys uh, do you pick a, a boy name and a girl name early? And have you done? Yeah. Have you done that? We have. Um, I don't. Uh, I don't think she wants me to share the two name the, the names. That yeah, we yeah, do. yeah. No, no, you, you don't, don't want do. to do. Yeah, you don't want to either because then everybody yeah. puts their fucking two cents in. I just want to know if you did. So no, yeah, we did. We so, picked we picked two names. Okay, so you pick. You got two names already, and then uh, like, how do you paint the room right now? Yeah, what, what color? Uh, do you- you- that's a good question. Um, I think we're gonna try and paint it kind of neutral. Yeah. Uh, you know, I have you know what it is? I have that room with the sa- with the sauna. You know, I put that sauna in the room. Yeah, yeah. So that's gonna be the baby's room. So I got to figure out what to do with the sauna now. I'm gonna see if I can fit it in the garage uh, with my home gym. But that'll be the that'll be the little baby's room. So. <laughs> hey, I'll be I'll be getting no sleep. At the end of the hey, you didn't respond to the the cable setup that I sent a picture of. Did you see that? What do you think of that thing? No, I didn't see that. What was it? Man, you're really off for a guy who's just sitting at home doing. He doesn't nothing. look at any of your texts. <laughs> uh, don't worry, I'll have Justin send it over to you. <laughs> okay. I, I put it in the thread. We went over to go get uh, some dumbbell racks for the dumbbells over here, and walked in. And so far, you know the obviously the red and black theme is coming together. You saw the pictures of Justin obviously finishing the the, the platform up, and you saw the rubber mats going on below yeah. the, P, the PRX setup, right? 
So we went over there to get dumbbell racks, and then I came across, and it's in the the group thread. So if you go back, you can probably see it's right after the pictures I sent of Justin doing the the um, platform. But it's uh it's red and black, and it's a full cable setup, and you can actually hook where the dumbbells would go. It's really nice. Got a ladder. It's a little expensive, but it's sick. Wait a minute. That is in our garage? No, no, no. I want no. to put it in our garage. No, we were trying to pitch you guys on it because it would be a great way to kind of store uh, you know, the dumbbells while also like having cable access. So, Dude, you don't got to pitch shit to me. If it's equipment, <laughs> yeah. you want to put more equipment in the garage, do it. All right, all right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We've, been, we've been trying to convince Doug over yeah. here. We'll see. We'll Doug, see. Doug's, I'm working some deals uh, to make that happen. Doug's too, been so uh, tightening down the yeah. hatches over here financially and stuff like yeah. that. Like Justin and I have to like measure out everything that we, uh -huh. we buy and stuff right now. So, Dude, so I, I have been reading a little bit of fun fact stuff, like just to try and like see, because I, I get inspired once I've like, like I listen to or I hear about another podcast, like some random facts, like I've never even known before. Like, so one of them I thought was pretty funny and gross at the same time. Like, you know, the, the one of the, like, I don't know if it's 80%, but it's a large majority of, of the substance of the, these, these perfumes that are commonly like some of the higher end perfumes out there that smell really good. Do you know what they consist of? What? Uh, is this where they use like, um, uh, extracts from like, like, like there was like some like from animal. I, I figured butt. Sal would kind of know. Yeah, yeah, it's actually from sperm whale vomit. Oh god, <laughs> so, <laughs> sperm whale vomit or or like excrement. So is it, isn't lipstick made from their dicks or something like that too? It could be. I mean, oh, apparently what? whales are very much uh, yeah. in the cosmetic. Is uh, it something like that? Yeah. Am I wrong? It's called a amber amber grease and and it's like produced from sperm whales only and so it's like it, it's in their intestines and then i guess they either vomit it up and then it like solidifies on top of the water and then they collect it and uh, it has kind of a musky smell once it kind of dries out and and then they can also extract like some kind of like a uh, smell free um alcohol from it as well too so i don't know it's just Weird. Yeah, it's really weird. Like, like how, how did I want to thought that? Yeah, you know? I always want to know how something like that starts. Yeah, I think it started as like soap. Like they started like kind of grabbing some of the fat and stuff, and then uh. they found that. And I don't know. I feel like some people just grab things in the sea, and then they just like hold it to their face and smell it. They're like, oh, that's that's really fishy. Oh, yeah. you know, that's let's, musky. I like that. Let's rub it all over yeah, me. I wonder where this comes from. <laughs> well, when something says all natural, and we think, oh, that must be that's good. Then that's all. You know, that's sometimes that's what it is. Like, yeah. instead yeah. of getting the instead of getting the chemical smell, you're getting you know sperm whale puke. Or you know, you know, beaver anus extract. <laughs> beaver yeah. anus. Yeah. The, another one I, I thought I, I would share was uh, I guess they had found a fossilized uh, a big huge mushroom which was used to stand like twenty four feet tall. What? And and three feet wide, and they think that they existed before trees. So the, they they found this. I guess they had just like um, done this archaeological dig, and they and they'd found this, and it's all over like the scientific journals and all these other like Smithsonian magazines. A Twenty foot mushroom. Twenty four foot mushroom. Whoa! White mushroom. Wow. Yeah. How, old, how weird was that? How old look? is it? Oh my how god! Old? Yeah, a, a couple million. I forget like how how many millions of years old, but very. Well, old. isn't the isn't the the currently the biggest organism on Earth? Isn't it a mushroom? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's that's because it's um, uh, you know, all underground connected. Like it connects like all under the soil, and so like the largest living land land mass is, I guess it's like up near Oregon. I think if I remember correctly, I remember hearing that on a podcast with um, uh, one of the mushroom experts. Oh wow, you yeah, know, I'm pulling up some stuff on it. it seems like that, that, that. I guess that was more common than not, right? That they had all these mushrooms that were mapped before trees. Yeah. That's so oh weird. wow! This goes back. Well, to mu the mushrooms are fascinating. Day. They're 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 fast. They have their own uh, health properties that are independent of vegetables, fruits, nuts, and and meats. Um, so you, the more you learn about them, the more you realize that you probably should consume them on a on a regular basis, like you would with vegetables and meat. Yeah, they're, yeah. All, they're awesome when you're quarantined too. <laughs> oh yeah, right, <laughs> totally. This quaz brought to you by Organifi. 
For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O R G A N I F I.com. And use the coupon code MINDPUMP for 20% off at checkout. Our first question is from A DeFeo1. I find myself less motivated to do home workouts on a consistent basis versus going to the gym on a daily basis. Any insight why this is and advice on improving consistency of workouts at home? Oh, yeah. This is uh, this is expected for a lot of people. And, and part of it is the, you know, think about when you go to the gym, the the ritual that you that you inevitably have that leads up to going to the gym and then the process of going to the gym, you know, it's like you're, you're preparing yourself for a workout and that preparation is what puts you in the mental state to want to have your workout. So, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe you go to, maybe you, you go to the gym after, you know, after work. So what do you typically do after work? Once, you know, work is kind of done, you think to yourself like, okay, I'm going to start getting ready you know, to go to the gym and you, you get your gym bag and then you take your, your pre-workout and then you drive to the gym and you might have a certain music that you listen to on the way there. And then the ritual of checking in and changing in the locker room. And by the time you're ready to work out, you've done this whole ritual to prepare yourself for your workout. And so, uh, one of, one of the best pieces of advice I can give you, because, you know, if you're at home, it's almost like you take, you know, you, you don't have a ritual, right? So it's mm-hmm. like, Oh, time to work out. But, you know, five seconds ago, we were just on the couch, you know, surfing, in, you know, Instagram or Facebook or, you know, watching, you know, scary news or something like that. Um, my recommendation is to ritualize uh, what you do before your workout. So that may mean drinking your pre-workout or your beet juice or, you know, something like that, uh, priming your body, turning on a specific type of music to prepare your body to work out, maybe move to a segment of your house that you've only designated for workouts. Maybe it's your living room or a part in your bedroom or whatever, get your equipment out, set it all aside and ritualize yourself, the, the, you know, create a ritual before the workout. Um, that can really help. The the other thing is that, uh, you know, and we've talked about this, uh, I I don't know, uh, probably a million times on the podcast, is that uh, motivation is a terrible way to, uh, to, 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 re- to get yourself to work out on a consistent basis because motivation, regardless of who you are, it's going to come and go. It's, a, it's like a feeling that you have, and it's impossible to always be motivated. So the important thing to focus in, on is discipline, meaning uh, you're going to have to force yourself when you don't feel motivated. And even if you just go through the motions – um, and that'll help carry you uh, through and be consistent until you do have the motivation again, which inevitably will come back. Motivation, you know, it, it waxes and wanes. It doesn't stay with you forever, but it doesn't stay away forever uh, as well. So I, something that's uh, been helping me out, it's been helping some of my client friends and stuff that I've been talking to with this. So up here where it's it's cold outside and it's, you know, nice and warm and cozy by the fire in here, it's really easy to... Uh, sit on the comfy couch and and watch TV and relax. And it's really hard to even just even having a a nice garage gym like we have here to get up off the couch and then head over there. So uh, one of the things that helps me a ton, it's not that hard to get up and go for a walk. Mm -hmm. So I I do the walk first. So if you uh, set a time in your day, and, and I do recommend ritualizing it somehow, whether it be first thing in the morning or by noon or by whatever, that you make your time that you're gonna go for at least like a half hour walk, and because you're out and breathing fresh air and you're getting the blood pumping and the heart rate going up a little bit, it's really easy from there to transition into the workout. Uh, I find it more difficult to transition from sitting on the couch to, okay, it's time for me to get in that mindset of lifting. Uh, so a nice way to kickstart that is to at least get out there and go walk. And so if you ritualize walking every single day, um, it'll probably promote you getting at least your three to five workouts in the week 
you know, I think that's a really good way to to stay on top of it. Yeah, I think too. One of the benefits of going to the gym is that you sort of make your way in one section and then kind of move to the next section, and you sort of have this idea based off of visuals what you're going to accomplish while you're at the gym. And I think that, uh, you know, at home, it's a totally different story. You just kind of see the same equipment you've always had. It's in one specific spot of your house. And after a while, like the ideas just don't, you know, keep coming and aren't as fresh. And I think that, you know, writing out specifically what you're going to do, whether it's on a whiteboard or you have it on a piece of paper. That's a good idea. And just really, you know, hone in specifics and try to... Try to be a little bit more disciplined in that uh, because the fact that uh, if you're just going to wing it, uh, there's a lot less likelihood uh, that you're going to get a great workout. And so, again, to, to pile on to what you guys said about ritualizing, I think that's very important to have a specific time to have a specific type of a warm up priming kind of a session, go outside, go for a walk, get your mind right first, and then have that plan there available, and then just try and hammer it out uh, as much as you can uh, on your own. Yeah. And, you know, uh, here's the other thing, too, is that it's easier to stay uh, consistent when you do it on a daily basis than if you do it on a every other day right. yeah. uh, type basis. So, um, you're, you're more likely like to keep the ball rolling. You know what I mean? You're more likely if you do it every day, you know, before you eat breakfast or after you eat breakfast or, you know, after lunch or before lunch or whenever, um, to structure it and to do it every single day so that you, you get into this kind of habit of doing it on a consistent, consistent basis versus every other day I work out. Cause then when you have that day off, it tends to be harder, uh, to get the ball rolling again. For sure. Next question is from Fit Fun Father. What is the best way to implement our at-home exercise program? One hour a day of body weight and resistance bands, or should we split it up into two or three 20-minute workouts? How can this affect our mental health? Oh, uh, 100%. The, it's so much better for you mentally to have, these, uh, to have your workouts be broken up into shorter sessions. Uh, number one, um, let's talk about the physical, uh, the physical attributes, like why, why it's good for you physically. It's good for you physically because if you've been going to the gym for a long time and now you're stuck at home, you've probably never worked out this way. You've probably never split up your workouts into shorter workouts throughout the day. So, you know, we've talked about this before that, you know, changing the stimulus and, you know, uh, it's novelty. Not, yeah, it's novel novel. So, uh, it's, it's, it's going to benefit your body because it's different. So that's number one. Number two, um, it breaks up your day. Uh, so you have something to look forward to every two or three hours. That kind of structure is phenomenal. It's excellent, uh, Mm -hmm. for mental health versus I work out once and then the rest of the day I'm, I'm sitting around and I can, my thoughts can get away from me and, you know, when you're working out, uh, it's it, exercises and movement is a great way to, to be present. Mm-hmm. And uh, being present is excellent for, for mental health because you're focusing on right now. Right now, I'm moving. Right now, I can feel my biceps. Right now, I can feel my legs. Right now, I'm healthy. Right now, I've got music on. And I'm not thinking about all these other, you know, potential, you know, scary things or whatever. So uh, 100%, man, if, if you're listening right now, uh, I highly recommend you you do short workouts throughout the day versus one workout. Look, look, and by the way, one workout a day is a, a million times better than no workout. So I don't want right, you to think right. this is the only way to do it, but I think it's a lot better uh, to do it this way. I think I think there's also uh, some major productivity uh, benefits from this too. So you know, there's a lot of people that are working from home now. And if you've ever, and I remember I used to tell clients that were like desk jobs where they had eight hours in front of a computer all day long. And I'd tell them like at every hour, just get up and do 10 squats and 10 push ups. And mm-hmm. that seems so basic. Uh, and it's not like you're going to get this great, massive workout from that. But one, the accumulation of it throughout the day, you end up doing quite a bit. And then two, pay attention to how you feel right after you do that and then you go back to work again. So I think I think I think the the benefits of the productivity that you'll get for those of you that 
are quarantined to home but still have to do at home work. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's a great strategy for those reasons. Forget the benefits that you'll get for the gains and the novelty of that, and I think what, all those great perks. I also see there's a lot of perks to that just for being uh, more productive throughout your day. So uh, if you can break it up, um, and I, 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 yesterday that's what I did was the three 20 minute workouts. If you can do that uh, multiple times a day, I think that you can see a lot of benefits from that. Yeah. Oh, dude. And go ahead, Justin. Go ahead. No, go ahead, dude. Oh, I was going to say, this is how, um, you know, uh, people work out in prison uh, a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. They'll do workouts. And why now you got to ask yourself, why, why do they work out like this in prison? Um, Part of it is because it it helps with their mental state. So here, here they are forcibly locked up. And the ones that tend to have the best outcomes are the ones that uh, have structured three workouts a day. And Mm -hmm. then in terms of the results that they get, uh, you know, this was one of the inspirations behind trigger sessions, which you find in maps anabolic. So if you're, if you don't have maps anabolic trigger sessions are not intense, they're lower intensity type workouts that you do throughout the day on the days off in between Mm -hmm. your, your heavy and hard workouts. And this was one of the inspirations for it is that, you know, I, I, I knew a couple people that had served some time and this is how they worked out. And they're like, dude, I was, when I came out, I was able to do, you know, hundreds of pushups at a time and pull-ups like crazy. And I got super fit and this is how I worked out. I did, you know, 20 minutes, you know, three, four times a day type of deal. Um, and I got great results with it. So, um, yeah, highly recommend it. I highly recommend it. Yeah. I, I was actually going to contribute. I saw, um, a post that inspired me. I think it was, it was Joe DeFranco. He's always has great exercises that he's putting out there. Um, but he brought back to my attention some isometric poses that, you know, he used w- within his body weight training. And then I, I, I thought about that and was going to structure a workout a couple times a day where I messed with the tempo on each workout. So one was a little bit more focused on isometric holds. One was then more focused on eccentric, like negative. So going really slow on the negatives. And then the last one was obviously like a little more explosive, a little more strength driven, uh, you, you know, working out. So there's different ways that you can mess with the variables to give you a different kind of stimulus as well with just body weight and bands. There's a lot you can do. Next question is from Ms. Adam224. I've noticed that since being confined to home, my appetite has dramatically increased. I know I'm not alone in this. Why are we so hungry and what can we do to regulate our intake? Now, don't you? So I, I think this is an example of uh, when we confuse like true hunger and cravings. Uh, yeah, with cravings, right? And, totally. And I think we're so used to being distracted and doing things. Uh, that you're kind of just at home. I, and I felt this too. So this isn't me like singling this person out and being like, you're not hungry, you're just craving. I, I get the same issue. It's uh, you're, it's more accessible. It's yeah. like all over. Yeah. Right. You're, you're, you're very close to your refrigerator all day long now, <laughs> you know, where there's only so many hours a day that I'm by my refrigerator or my, you know, food cupboard or whatever. So yeah, I, I think that this is an example, though, of when we start to confuse uh, real hunger with just pure cravings, right? Totally. This is it's stress eating. Mm-hmm. So you're you're at home. You're you, you know you you're not supposed to go anywhere. You're maybe not working. You're hearing all this you know uh, uncertain news. Um, you're right next to your refrigerator, and food, you know, temporarily makes you feel better. Um, it's a fact, like when you're eating something that you enjoy eating, it puts you in the moment and it gives you a temporary break from fear or from stress. This has been well known forever. This is one of the main reasons why, uh, people, uh, overeat is because they, especially when people are really obese, when you look at when all the, whenever I've worked with clients that were in the severely obese category, you know, 50, 60 pounds or more overweight. Um, almost all of them used food as a drug, as a way to to escape whatever negative feelings that they have. So that's what you're doing uh, right now. So number one, I want you to uh, empathize with yourself and forgive yourself because if you start to uh, think how angry you are with yourself or how could I do this or why am I doing this, those negative feelings will fuel more of that kind of feeding. Okay, because if think about it this way, if negative feelings are driving you to eat more than you normally do, what do you think more negative feelings are going to do? Right. Mm. So step number one, uh, empathize with yourself 
and forgive yourself. That's number one. Don't get pissed off and, and, and hate yourself because that'll just make it worse. So that's number one. Number two, um, now that you've acknowledged what is going on, you want to, you need to actively think of how you can take care of yourself. You need to actively think how you can care for yourself while you're feeling uh, these feelings. And there's a couple things you could do. Uh, number one, um, every time you feel like you want to grab some food and snack on something or eat and you've identified that this is, I'm not really hungry. I'm just stressed out. Uh, get on the phone with someone, uh, call someone, FaceTime someone, family or friend and talk to them, uh, create a little bit of a space between you and the food, create a barrier. Um, you could also meditate or you could exercise. You could say to yourself, um, wow, I'm really craving some food. I'm going to go for a walk. Um, instead, you got to interrupt the cycle because the longer that this goes on, the more it becomes uh, a solidified behavior and the more difficult it is uh, later on uh, to stop it. But I do want to be very clear, totally uh, normal and probably common. I can I can only oh, imagine yeah. every, you know, I guarantee lots of people are going through this right now. I know I am. Mm -hmm. And you just got to stop the, the cycle. Don't get super angry with yourself. Be be kind um, and replace because uh, you can create that. Uh, you can reinforce other behaviors. So if, if I'm stressed out and I'm reaching for food and I interrupt that with uh, a walk or a phone call with a family member or friend, then now what? I, not only am I stopping a behavior that might be bad for me, but I may be creating a new behavior that I can reinforce. So then what ends up happening, the more you practice that is next time you're stressed out, your instinct isn't to grab food. Your instinct is to do the other thing that you've now started doing, whether it's calling a friend and FaceTiming them or uh, going for a walk. So you can hack this by recreating more healthier behaviors. But first, you have to identify it. And again, don't don't judge yourself for it. OK, next question is from R. Yang. 9015. Can you guys define what it means to take a workout to fatigue? How does this relate to taking it to failure? So I, I, I picked this question hmm. because uh, this is how we recommend in Maps Anywhere. And I've, I've got a lot of DMs of people confused on fatigue and failure. And it was something that I remember when we wrote the program that we talked a lot about what that looks like. And I think when we, when, first of all, when we discuss failure, uh, our, our definition of failure, I think, is a lot different than uh, a lot of other people when they explain failure. Uh, when, you, when, you are, when you are doing, let's just say, you know, for argument's sake, uh, bicep curls, and you are keeping really strict good form uh, for 10 reps is what you're targeting, and at rep nine, you begin to, you know, rock your elbows or lean back to get the weight up like that. You've gone too far, right? Like the minute that form starts to break down, mm -hmm. um, that's failure to us. So when we explain in any program or we talk on this podcast about uh, exercising to failure, it's not for to failure of the entire body or breaking down. It's failure to be able to perform the movement with perfect form. So I, I think it's important that we make that clear. Totally. And that's uh, I, that's an excellent explanation. Um, we use the word uh, fatigue because, like Adam said, when you say failure, most people have a, a, a different understanding of failure than, than how we would. And typically when you say failure, people think, oh, I'm going to do as many as I can until I can't do another yeah. one. Until you flop on the ground. Well, there's even yeah. there's acronyms in the fi fitness community that's become very popular, right? With the ENOM, right? As many reps as as many reps as possible. Yeah. AMRAP and uh, or that's uh, that's AMRAP. What's e EMOM is oh, every minute on every the minute. minute on the minute. Yeah, yeah all these uh, all the and right now I'm seeing this everywhere. Like obviously yeah. everybody's posting uh, at home workouts, and you know I remember when we first wrote Maps Anywhere, the the motivation behind that was. Uh, how lackluster uh, effort I think there was towards programming at home stuff. Yeah, and I think too that people don't realize how difficult it is to maintain really rigid, tight technique and form 
in your exercises. I think it it's just a natural propensity to want to kind of cheat your way through because your body wants to make these movements a little bit more efficient, a little bit easier for you uh, to get through them. So it's a different mindset. It's not about getting through the reps and it's not about accomplishing and tackling the workout. It's performing each one with the best intent and what it's supposed to do. And so once that breaks, once, you know, you have little bits of variance in your form and you start paying attention to that, that's where we say stop. So that's the difference. It's You do get fatigued in these movements and tired, and that's one thing. But if you can still maintain a nice rigid technique, then it's it's fair game. Yeah, to put it in a nutshell, um, you want to keep going so long as your form is perfect. So the word is perfect. Okay. So you have to be very honest with yourself. If your forms deviates at all, you're done. That's, that's when you stop the set. So it's not keep going until you can't do anymore. It's keep going until your perfect form is no longer perfect. And you're, you know, uh, Adam touched on, you know, why we created maps anyway, because remember we created maps anywhere years ago before all of this stuff was going on. Mm -hmm. And when we looked at, uh, you know, the, the, the space and we looked at workouts that were at home, I mean, they were better than nothing, but what they basically were was just a combination of body weight exercises. That's what, that's what at home workouts were. And they were all randomly thrown and all of them designed based off of, you know, intensity. That's it. It was like, how much, you know, how many exercises can we throw together? How can we make you jump in place? How can we make you do burpees? How can we make you sweat and get tired? And, and of course, that's that's better than nothing. But if you're uh, if the workout isn't programmed well, just like with any workout, just like with a workout at home uh, at the gym, if the programming isn't good, you're just not going to get the best results. And what you don't want to do is fall into the following trap. You don't want to fall in the trap of making up for bad programming with intensity. This is a, a huge mistake. Mm-hmm. And to be honest, I see this mistake being made not just by average everyday people, but by fitness enthusiasts who should know better because mm-hmm. what you're having right now probably is a lot of people who go to the gym on a regular basis, super hardcore. Now they're stuck at home. And of course they're, they're worried about losing their gains. And so all they're doing is just beating the crap out of themselves at home with insane workouts, which uh, you know, after a couple weeks, um, that's not going to, not only is it going to yield you no results, but it might even start to take you backwards. Well, that's all I'm seeing right now. All I'm seeing right now is the, the EMOM, the AMRAP, the, the Tabata, the, all these circuit based body weight, uh, programs are what people are, all these fitness Lots professionals. Of aimless movement. Yeah. And so, yeah, there was a, a lot more thought, uh, put into, uh, maps anywhere. I mean, the idea was, and what we want to do is to show people that you could train from home and progress. Mm-hmm. This isn't just a program uh, to get you by because you don't have a gym right now. The idea of it is that you can get into an, an at-home program and actually see progress uh, in your strength, your gains, your body fat loss, whatever your main goal was. And it wasn't just centered around uh, intensity. It's not just, can we make you sweat and burn a bunch of calories? It, it was very methodical the way we structured that program. And so, yeah, I'm seeing a ton of the you know high intensity, circuit-based, jump around, plyometric type of at-home stuff. It's uh, pretty weak. No, th- those workouts are terrible, whether you're at a gym or at home. Uh, they're, they're, they're terrible. I mean, what you, what you find uh, in, in a well-planned at-home workout, um, you know, and I'll use Maps Anywhere as an example because I'm familiar with that program. That's the one we created. Is Yes, you do have some body weight exercises, but you also have band exercises. You also have exercises designed uh, with a correctional component. You have tension poses, uh, which are very important that almost nobody ever does. And, and these, these are using a, you know, a, like a broomstick, just a regular old broomstick. That'll give you feedback. So you have a whole uh, variety of different ways of training the body all put together um, in a very effective, well thought out program that, as Adam said, we designed it to be standalone effective uh, on its own, re- regardless, not as a as a poor replacement. Uh, but, you know, and, and one of the keys in there is we tell people on some of the sets and it has to be done appropriately. It's not on every set. It's not on every exercise, but it's done uh, strategically are to do reps to fatigue. Um, and we do use intensity, but we use it smart and we apply it properly. 
and that's the that's the type of intensity we, we we want you to go for and that does not mean you go until you can't go anymore that's we almost never recommend that kind of uh, failure or intensity and here's there's a couple reasons why number one uh when your form breaks down and it's no longer perfect now all you're doing is you're training shitty recruitment patterns and shitty form. Now you're pushing your body mm-hmm. super hard, but the, 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 the technique that you're now solidifying, because anything you train, you train, you know what I'm saying? So whatever it is you practice with your workout is what you're training your body to learn how to do. So if you're, if you're doing a set of 50 pushups and the first 30 were perfect and the last 20 were less than perfect, well, now you've got about, you know, 60% you're hammering your body with good form and 40% is shitty form. Now you keep that up uh, long enough and you do that consistently enough and you're going to start to solidify bad recruitment patterns. That's going to increase your risk of injury. It's going to take the focus off of the target muscles. And not only that, but intensity for intensity's sake, it compromises your body, your body's ability to adapt. Remember, your goal with exercise is to send the right signal, the perfect signal, to get your body to adapt. If you go too far beyond that, all your body can think about is recovery. So yeah, you're going to get sore, you're going to sweat, your body's going to recover, but it's not going to adapt. It's not going to add strength, build muscle. Uh, it's not going to improve. You're just going to survive. Um, and that's a terrible uh, approach to exercise. So we almost never in any of our programs tell people to keep going until you can't move anymore. Almost always it's the, the highest thing that we recommend is uh, when your form breaks down, you're done. There's no, there's no need to practice and teach your body uh, less than perfect form. There's no, why, why practice less than perfect form? Practice per, perfect practice uh, makes perfect, right? That's 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 the Amen. that's what you hear in sports all the time, <laughs> and that's 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 true uh, for exercise as well. So, uh, regardless if you're following maps anywhere or not, you're doing your own at home workout. Uh, do perfect reps, and when you when your next rep, uh, your form is 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 off of perfect, you're done with that set. Take a break, rest, gather yourself, and then go again, and then follow that same strategy. As soon as your form is, is less than perfect, stop the set. You, there's no need to practice and, and train your body to, tra- to, to move in ways that are less than perfect because, again, you're in this for the long haul. We're not just looking for one hard, short workout or, you know, make me sweat today. Uh, you, you want a lifestyle, a lo- uh, you know, lifelong fitness. So practice perfect. That's the key. And with that, go to mindpumpfree.com download all of our guides and resources. We have a lot of free resources on that page. So you can read them all stuff. And there's all kinds of different topics, how to build your arms, how to get a, a, a tighter midsection, how to squat like a pro, um, how to burn more body fat. You know, there's, there's a lot of different resources on there. They're all free. Every single one of them, you can download all of them. Um, again, it's mindpumpfree.com. You can also find uh, Adam, Justin, and myself, on Instagram, so you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, you can find me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.